Uh, Miguel, um, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't see anybody else that signed on to this um, to Zoom meeting yet that are members of the St. Croix DAP. Am I supposed to, as chair, send out reminders to these members? I mean, I, I don't understand. No, we send reminders to everybody. Okay. Um, so what we did before was to, you know, open uh, 10 after. Maybe we can allow to have world quorum. Okay. So we, can, we can, we can, you as chairman can say, you know, we will start at 10 after one and, and wait. Mm -hmm. Because I'm, I, you know, the DAP members, I remembered when we had in-person meetings, they they opted for them to get um, emails because phone calls doesn't work and paper mail gets delayed and all this other stuff. But I mean, if if I need to do follow-ups, I prefer it coming from the council, but, you know, just as everybody else, I have a lot going on as well. Eddie, I send this, I send this three times to everybody, so. Okay. All right, I'm, I'm not blaming they anyone, know. but I, I, huh? I just, I said I'm not blaming anyone. I just got asked the question. No, I know. Well, I mean, things happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. Uh, Mike Fuller is well. I'll do it when we go officially. He, he, yeah, uh, he has to be excused. He can't make it. He's tied Mike up. Mike Fuller. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. Anybody else who you think? Would be no, excused? No one else so far. Okay. So we're going to start in 10 minutes or eight minutes? Yeah. That, that, give it, give it 10 more minutes so that I'm going to call some people. All right, so I guess I'm on mute and I'll be back at 110, 112. 110 is okay. Okay, let me, let me make some phone calls here. I'll, I'll be back. Okay, I just talked to Toby. He's trying to get connected, but he is not having luck. But he's on it.
Welcome, Toby. You made it. Toby. Yes, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Toby. See. Okay, got you now. Are we still waiting for others to join? Yeah, we are going to start in four minutes. Thank you. Yeah. Toby. Hola, Toby. Hola, como ta? Uh, I just talked to Nikki. He just can't find the address to enter the um, the meeting. So I'm gonna send it to him. Yeah, thank you for. Gracias, Jairo. Graciela. But the like a lot in the screen. Hola, Miguel. Hola. Hola, Miguel. Hola. Okay, Nikki's on his way trying to connect. Okay. Okay. Okay.
Miguel. Yeah. Estoy llamando a la gente que está en la lista porque no hay quórum. Está bien. Tengo que empezar ahora y a ver cómo de joining. ¿eh? Bueno, nada más Tengo hay cuatro para mí. Sí, ya sé. Y está todavía Nikki tratando de entrar. Hola, Joy. Joy. Hola. How are you? Edward, Eddie, it's 11 after. I think that we can start and people can join in. Okay. Do we have a quorum or we don't need a quorum? We don't need a quorum, really, uh, because you're not going to vote on many of the issues. You already went through the whole thing. Okay. So we can start by just was chair stating the, the date and the time. I, okay. I local. Welcome everybody to the DAP meeting St. Croix. Today is uh, April the 19th, 2021, and it's now 1.12 p.m. So officially this meeting is open. Um, when you're not speaking, just um, mute your mics and raise your hand in the chat and you'll be recognized to speak in, in the turn, turn that you have um, asked to, or requested to speak. Miguel? Okay, also this is Zoom and those of you who are familiar with Zoom, you already have the little hand that you can use for the chat as the chair said. I will call the names uh, and then when I call your name, I will ask you to uh, identify yourself for the record, those of you that we don't know at this time. So I have here Graciela Garcia Moliner from Council Staff, Yahai Rivera, eh, Carlos Fachete, Cristina Olan, also from Council Staff, David Ortiz, Tiana Martino, Council Staff, Edward Schuster, Chair of the DAP, Jose Diaz, would you like to identify yourself and uh, if you work as a fisher? Yes. So can you identify yourself, uh, Jose, your name and affiliation? Buenas tardes, Gerson Martinez. Buenas tardes, Gerson. Welcome, Gerson. Okay, we also have Madeline Guyan, Michael Funk, uh, Ros Rosa Pierra, will you identify yourself, please? Hola. Uh -huh. And your affiliation? Yes, I'm a fisher. Fisher woman from San Croix. And then we have uh, William Tobias. Uh, Mr. Sherman, we don't, we don't have that quorum. Uh, we are missing two. But I believe that uh, they can join in. Yeah, uh, but can... Can we find out who Joe Diaz is? I mean, he, he didn't see who is, he, who is he affiliated with. He's from Madrid and he's a fish. His father is a fisherman. But he's, he, he's talking from Madrid, Spain. Sí. Okay. Then the agenda today. Uh, oh, we have another guest. It's, it says he has Samsung. We identify yourself is a is a number. Okay. Gerson is on also. You're trying person. to connect. Yeah. So the agenda today is uh, we only have two items in the agenda plus other business. And the easiest one to explain is that the island based FMPs that we hope will be approved by this time or implemented by this time. They were approved last year because of COVID and other issues that, that we're having have not been able to be implemented at, at this time. 
So today we can uh, talk about possible measures that you would like to include the, as an amendment to the island base of MPs and Croy. Uh, the issue that was presented last year was the island base of MPs and compatible regulations with the local governments. So the the way that, that we can discuss it is after we have the ecosystem of MP presented by Graciela, we have some time. And if you have any measure that you would like the council to consider when the plan is implemented during 2021, hopefully it will be implemented for during the later part of this year. Uh, we can start identifying those so the staff can begin working with the paperwork that you need and also to schedule uh, any necessary meetings for uh, moving forward with the land base of MPs and any possible modification to it. At this time, Mr. Chairman, we would like to allow Graciela then to take the meeting and, and do the presentation. Yeah, before before we start, for the record, Miguel, um, Mike Fuller was asked to be um, excused. Okay, yeah, I, know, I took a note of that too before. Okay, yeah. all right. Excuse. Okay. Hey, Graciela, you ready? Okay, so do you want me to talk about the island base first or second? No, we already talked about the island base. Go ahead with the ecosystem. Okay, give me a second so that I can show the screen. Okay. okay, I hope everyone can hear me. Good afternoon, Graciela Garcia Moliner. Thank you all for uh, all your contributions to the, uh, to the development of the ecosystem conceptual model for St. Croix. So before we start, let me... Mute, okay. Okay. Despacito. <laughs> okay, so we have reviewed all of the um, videos and minutes from all of the meetings that the DAP St. Croix has had regarding the development of the ecosystem conceptual model to date. And what we're presenting to you, it's a very short summary of the uh, history of how this conceptual model was developed. And we want to thank you for all your collaboration in developing a, the conceptual model for St. Croix based on your view of the ecosystem and on your knowledge of the ecosystem. We have identified the uh, drivers that impact components of the different of the ecosystem. And we have done this from the perspective of the DAP. Uh, this is not the only conceptual model for St. Croix. There are other groups as we speak that are going to be developing their uh, ecosystem conceptual model. Such groups might include people from other commercial fishers that not normally participate in the council process or recreational fishers, non-government organizations, uh, regulatory agencies and businesses, coastal businesses, uh, and I think I'm missing a few, but there will be, uh, there is that effort going on. And the idea is that we will look at each separate conceptual model and see where all these groups agree or disagree in terms of developing the best ecosystem conceptual model for St. Croix. So, we have very little to do in the St. Croix ecosystem conceptual model because you've pretty much uh, tied all the drivers to the affected components over time. We do have the notes and the reasons why you had connect, made those connections. So today, the task at hand would be to finalize the, uh, uh, the connections that are missing. And this is not going to be the last time that you see this. This is an evolving process, so it will uh, continue, but the task of the DAP regarding these connections will be uh, finalized uh, today. So a brief history of the timeline of the times that you have met. It all began 
in March 2019 when you had a joint meeting of all the DAPs and the SSC, and then you had breakout sessions, and everyone was asked to put in sticky notes a uh, what drivers, what connections, what was important of the ecosystem that uh, needed to be included in the model. And at this point, it was only the connections, but without any positive or negative impact. Uh, secondly, you met in March uh, 2019 and July 20th, 30th, uh, July 30th, 2019, <laughs> 2030th, yes. Uh, and each member provided You've done this individually. Each member provided a positive or negative impact and gave a magnitude of how that impact uh, could be measured. So we could score them and actually have a kind of quantitative uh, outlook on what, what were the driver affected component pairs that were most significant for the island of St. Croix. So after that, you met in August last year to finally address most of the uh, uh, of what you had left, but we actually missed two uh, two connections. So in that case, we are doing a consensus approach as we are doing today, and that means that we will go over the only two remaining uh, issues that we have, and uh, by consensus, if if there is agreement, we can score them and give them the, uh, the direction of the impact. And we will see this, hold on a second, in, okay, in a second. So the top 13 components to date, as you can see them on the screen, I hope everyone's able to see it, are, and I'm going to read them for the record, <coughs> development, the need for education and outreach, commercial fishers, hurricanes, moorings, markets, increased water temperature, wetland restoration, marine pathogens, discharges, non-point discharges, fish in general, recreational fishers, and management bias. So from the pairs that you had provided over, the, over time, these are the ones that scored a, the highest to date. So any changes that you want to see, we provided for you an ex a, a PDF that had all of the um, components, uh, driver components pairs that we found, and we need to go over the ones that are missing. And if you see anything else that you need to change or add or delete, to please let us know. Whenever you make a comment on any of these pairs, please give us the rationale why you see the connection that is being made as you've done to date. So this is today's work. Uh, I have to say one thing. You're seeing uh, this mental modeler and it looks uh, kind of uh, all over the place. However, the software that we're using allows us to create a matrix, like the one that you saw in the, uh, in the pair uh, driver component uh, file that we sent you. And it actually allows us to give it that weight. So we will, so we do have a score. So this becomes a quantitative uh, model. So we have these two missing connections from toxic bottom pains to need for enforcement and from need for education and outreach to toxic bottom uh, pains. This is a, a, a better view of what's missing. So, so Leah High basically pulled out the last two meetings or the last meeting and this one so that you can see exactly the only things that you're missing. If you look at the arrows, you'll see that the brown ones are the negative impacts from, for example, wetland restoration to shoreline erosion. And the width of that line tells you how uh, much of an impact that is. For example, the positive impacts are in blue so from need for education and outreach, there is that positive uh, connection to discharge, point discharge uh, pollution, and it's a, a weaker than the one, for example, from need for education and outreach to discharge non-point uh, non sources. So we need to deal with these two and see you know, if you can score them or if you want to keep them or if you want to delete them. Uh, but we've 
search throughout all of the uh, videos and and minutes and PowerPoint presentations and everything that you've done to date. And this is the only two that we could identify. So uh, right away, we're going to get, if there are no questions, we'll get into, a, into the um, scoring of the two that are missing. And Mr. Chair, that's what I have. Okay, I thought that I was going pretty slow, but do you want me to go even slower? No? Okay. Well, do you have any question? That's a, that's a really patient. Despacito. So do you have any Some specific questions? Hello. Who's this? Who's, who's that? Yeah, but do you have a specific question, Rosa? Okay, so Mr. Chairman, if I may, then I have a question. I'm sorry, I had a little burst of energy there. Does she have a question or no questions? She has a question. Go ahead with a question. No question. Now, this is Toby. I have a question. I indicated in the chat. This Go is Marsha. I also have questions. I have here Toby and then Marsha. Toby? Yes. Go uh, ahead. On the diagram, which I, one, the last one or the complete one? The one you have there. Okay. Uh, I have two things. I would go from education and outreach directly to both commercial and recreational fishers, uh, not necessarily through endangered species, threatened and endangered species. That's a, that's a, a okay. subject. Hold on a second. Leah, do you have the mental modeler up? We're saying uh, Chloe? Not at the moment, because we were going to work straight okay. on the Excel, but I can pull it up really fast. Just give me one minute until I look up for the file. Okay, but I can go to the Excel file that I sent you. And Toby, you want to go from need for out education and outreach to? To both recreational and commercial fishers. Okay. And I think it would be important to get some input from Marsha on this as well. Okay, so let me insert a couple of lines here so that I can do this. So, uh, need for education and outreach directly to commercial fisheries. Fisheries. Hello? Um, fishers, right? Fishers or fisheries? Fishers. Joe? I'm I'm really sorry. I think I might be in the wrong call. I think okay. that I'm having that issue too. I'm in the wrong call. I thought I was in a karaoke call. I thought I was in a karaoke call. Okay, those who are in the wrong call, hope that you get the the right call. Yes, but can I say you. goodbye to everybody? Bye, Bye now. Adios. In despacito, adios. You despacito. <laughs> Adios, adios, everybody. Adios, Toby. Adios, Miguel. Adios, adios. Bye. Awfully sorry, but goodbye. Goodbye. I love you. No, oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, so, Toby. Before we, before we comment on the on these, okay, um, I'd like to add another moving toxic bottom paints beneath moorings 
but but you're trying to make give me the the connection you want toxic bottom pains move to the, moorings move the move the item to beneath moorings and i would change that moorings topic to moorings moorings slash marinas okay so so what's the driver the driver is the toxic bottom paint what causes the problem or the marinas cause the problem the accumulation of vessels in those areas okay so it's a rings marinas Like that. So Moorings Marina will increase the amount of toxic bottom paints. Yes, right? correct. Okay. I'm going to add a couple more lines just in case you have anything else that you want to add. And then the uh, education and outreach would go to Moorings Marinas. Okay. Okay. So do you want to give me now so that the group can discuss the positive or negative impact and whether it's high, medium or low? Or do you want me to go on to Marsha's comment if she needs to add anything else and then we can go through the ones that are being reviewed, Mr. Chair, which is your preference? I would add Marsha's comments, please. Okay. Before we move on, I would like to add Marsha's comment because it might be related to what Toby is saying and then Perfect. we go from there. Thank you. Okay, this is Marsha Taylor. And first I wanna thank you for getting this out. Um, unfortunately, I wish we had more time to review it because I think there's a lot of information here and there are some things that I would like to have clarified before I'm comfortable um, signing off on this. Um, and I think one thing that would be helpful is if we had the definitions for some of these things because it matters which way it goes. So anyway, saying that, um, I'd like to, I, I agree with Toby, first of all, but I want to um, raise some other things. If you can go to the bottom of the chart where you see illegal, unregulated, unreported fishing, and it appears to be, have a positive benefit to spawning aggregations, I'm, I'm confused by that. I'm thinking that should be negative, and if I'm wrong, please help me. Okay, so if everyone agrees with that, this connection should be from illegal, unregulated, unreported fishing to spawning irrigation should be negative. I agree. Okay. Okay, my um, next comment has to do in the give, very- give me, a, give me a second so that oh, I can sure. fix Sorry. it here. Okay, so negative. Would it still be a high? Like, like if regulated fishing negatively impacts and severely impacts spawning aggregations. I would, I would um, let the fishers um, comment on that since I don't see that personally. Okay, so Mr. Chair, do you want to elicit comments from the fishers? Yeah, open it up to them. Why not? Chairman, this is Pat Scow. Um, yes, I kind of agree with Toby Marshall that illegal, unregulated, unreported fishing and spotting aggregation is a negative impact, and I think it's a high impact. Who, who made the comment? Patricia Scott. Ah, hola, Pat. Thanks. Pat, can you talk a little bit louder, please? Yes, I'm sorry. I um, 
agree with Toby and Marsha that the um, un, uh, illegal, unregula unregulated uh, fishing and unreported fishing aggravation is a negative and it's a high negative. Perfect, thank you. And Graciela, and to the chair, if the panel needs more time today, you can go ahead and add another hour because the chair had that discretion. We we only are required to to start at a, the time of the date as an outside federal register, but you can stay longer if you need to for full discussion. Uh, any question you have on definitions can be answered at this time. Are you ready for another comment, Graciela? Yes, let me unmute myself so that I can talk to you. Yes, please go ahead. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm going back to the chart again in the middle where it says commercial and private vessels and it says it's beneficial to coral reefs. I guess I'd like to see the justification on that. I would, I would have said negative. Okay, so that was commercial to coral reefs. Okay, give me a second. Here we go. Okay, so one of the things that we're looking to do, and thank you for bringing this up, is that if there was any uh, misunderstanding, that's where we want to clear it up. So commercial and private vessels to coral reefs, uh, this, is, this might be one of those times when negative and positive are confused. So you would like to see this uh, negative. That's the way I see it, but if there's some justification for it to be the way it is, I'd like to hear it. How do commercial and private vessels benefit coral reefs? Coral reefs. Okay, for most of uh, eh, eh, so this this was the discussion that was done by consensus at the la at the last meeting. So one of the things that that we're doing now it's really going over the, everything that you see in blue on the screen. Those were the decisions that were made at the last meeting. So there is a possibility of uh, having uh, some mixed up in in translating everything from the discussion to the uh, uh, to the actual scoring. So my question to you is, if this were going to, if this was changed to a negative, would that still be a high impact from the commercial and the private vessels such as, you know, anchoring or dumping ballast water or something like that onto the coral reef be negative, but still be a high impact? And again, it doesn't have to be high. It can be medium or low. In I, that, I, I in would that. say medium. That's just my opinion. Okay. So, Mr. Chair, are there any comments on the changes that are being made? If someone has any comments, please do speak up. I agree. <clears throat> this is Toby. I agree with Marsha. Okay. Okay, and, and Marsha and Toby, thank you very much for bringing these things up. Again, you know, you'll see it once this is done, it's going to go to the to the council. If there are any other uh, questions and you do have time to comment over this period of time, and as Miguel said, you know, if you either need more time or we need to bring it up again. Uh, and, and one thing that we will do is to actually get you, a, if St. Croix prepared, a, a definitions of what everything that they that you discussed was what the definition of every single thing is available from the transcripts we will provide that to you this is toby if if marcia is done i do have some other comments no no i'm not done <laughs> Um, I'm done with the chart right now, but there are some things on the Excel, this, this nine page Excel that I had questions on. Okay. Um, but there was one chart you had before that, which was um, driving component, affected component. Um, and it was just a half page one. 
So my question is, it had development um, impacting commercial fishers positively. And I just wanted to make sure I understood that one. Um, the one that I'm highlighting right now, development to commercial fishers. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I, I just question that. Is that true? Does anybody else want to help me with how that, um, how um, development is, has a positive impact on commercial fishers? Because I'm, I don't see that. What's that again? Can you repeat that? Okay, so it's listed that development has a positive impact on commercial commercial fishers. Is that true? And, and if so, how how is that? This is Gerson. In what way will that be beneficial for us? Would it be through markets? Development of markets? Oh, that this, could be, yeah. Maybe this, more business. This is Eddie, the chair. I think this is where the confusion came in. I think at the time, this is where I had transitioned to being a council member. But anyway, I, I remember this going into one of the meetings and was it beneficial to the, to the commercial fishers as bringing more business or was it beneficial to the fishers as opening um, or preventing them like, for example, can you repeat what it was, Graciela, again? I think it was, you, you said development of something. Okay, so Leah Hyde's going to intervene whenever she looks at the notes and tells us there is this uh, connection. So development to commercial fishers could be in terms of increasing market for the commercial fishers. I think it had to do something with hotels as well, like development, like hotels, maybe um, resorts, whatever. Mm -hmm. I think that's where that question came in. And yes, it was a positive impact. And then I think we didn't rate it as high, medium, or low. So it needed some clarity or it's, it, right now it needs clarity to it. What, what, well, what are you referring to? Well, one of the things is that th the reason why there are numbers here is because when you score them separately, we have all the scores. I mean, I can open this up and, and show you, you see? So we know who score three was, score four was, who was the person doing that? But it just creates too much of, you know, all these numbers in here. So that's why the information is just based on the numbers. And then the, wherever you see high, medium or low now, it's in the blue lines that you completed at the last meeting. And now with the yellow, we're going through those that you are trying to uh, uh, make sure that the connection is correct. Okay, so I can show you how many people contributed to the, to the assessment. Okay, and usually if we have any notes, they will be here. There are no feature, notes that I can find right here. Okay, so that's what that is. And let me close this off again because I think it's too much. Uh, there we go. Okay, so you've gone through the process of doing individual scoring way back when to consensus scoring to trying to finish up the connections now. And as I said, please remember that if Along the way, there are things that you see that are not uh, the way they should be uh, to, to let us know. And that's what we're doing right now. So in this case, if development has to do with resorts and development in general that will create markets for the commercial fishers, would that still be a positive connection? This is, yeah. to this is Toby once again. And as Marcia did flag this one, because uh, yes, development can assist commercial fishers by providing market, even providing uh, access to the shoreline, but development can also restrict access to the shoreline as has been seen in the past here uh, for commercial fishers. 
So I would also indicate that as a, a negative effect as well. Okay. So again, yes, you have some, some uh, areas where you have both negative and positive effects. So we can do that. And then your comment in this case would be that this would be a low, medium, or high in case of the positive and the negative. More it gets access, but it can also be detrimental. I would indicate medium. I would agree. Okay, any other comments on that? Um, no, but I would like to move on to a couple other questions I had. Perfect, so tell me where to go next. Okay, I'm looking at the first page of that, um, of the big nine page chart. And I'm seeing that ACL's management is, has a negative effect on commercial fishers. And I guess that's because they can't take as much as they want or whatever. But then if you move down to page four, um, you'll see that marine conservation areas, closed areas or a type of management is having a positive effect on fishers. So I'm just seeing an inconsistency here and um, whether it's positive, you could look at it both ways, I guess, but I think they need to be the same. A, the a annual catch limits specifically a, put a pound amount that they can harvest from the EEZ every year, correct? Mm -hmm. The marine conservation areas, a, closed areas, etc., restrict fishing for a, a larger a number of species. So ACLs are not for every single species. They're for specific a, species groups that occur in the EEZ, right? Right. So there are two different types of management a, approaches. But, but I would argue that both of them ultimately in the long run are positive for commercial fishers. Okay, so in this case here, this negative would be, you'll see it as a positive in the long run. Yeah. Does anyone have any specific comments about that? Do you want me to, uh, so you see with that score, yeah, uh, it was a divided opinion in that case. This is Toby once again, and, and I would agree with Marsha on this. It actually enables commercial fishers to continue fishing at a sustainable level. I agree with that. Okay, so in this case, do you want me to keep negative short term, positive long term, or you want to change the, uh, the effect and the score at this time? You want to add or you want to change? I think positive and then we can rate it individually. This is Edward Schuster. I think it was rated as a negative impact because here it is, we didn't have port sampling. We still don't have port sampling to compare, what is it called? A qualitative or quantitative data? or compare the data, um, the commercial reports, catch reports to see actually what is being landed versus what is being reported. So this is where the negative impact I think came in. If I make sense, any commercial fisher there could add to it, Gerson? That makes sense. That does make sense, Eduardo. I'm lost. So you don't have, I mean, you have the commercial landings information. You have some information on the um, biostatistical sampling uh, that you do. There is a, basically no evaluation of the uh, ACLs and the management that it's in place. So therefore the annual catch limits end up being a negative for the fishers, for the commercial right. fishers specifically. Correct. And in that case, from the individual scores that you had provided, it ranged from medium to high. Correct. 
So you can leave it as is. 0. 0.6 would be, you know, a medium. You want to make it to a high. But well, then we right have to now, address. Right now, I think it should be moved to a high because if you have not evaluated the ACLs, it, it, it's it's a negative, and it should be a high um, consensus to me. Okay, I need someone. Let me see. I'm going to read the chat a second, uh, Mr. Chairman. If you allow me a second. Okay. Well, I apparently doesn't have anything to do with us. Okay. So the the other issue. I mean, so if anyone, if everyone agrees by consensus, the this ACL management to commercial fishers will be negative, and it will be a high. But you need to also address the the uh, what you were just presented with by Marsha and Toby, that in the end, in the long run, it could be a positive thing. I think we're looking at the immediate impacts versus the long-term in intent. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So do you want me to, uh, uh, to annotate the uh, the positive long term effect that this might have. I think it should be the way you had it. Uh, long term, short term. Okay, so short term negative, long term positive. Yes, and the same for the closed area on page four. Okay. Does everyone agree before I move on from here? Yes, I agree. Besides yes. the high for the negative, would the positive also be high in terms of the long-term effect that it might have for sustainable fisheries? Whenever, this is Edward Schuster for the record, whenever that is, whenever that happens with the evaluation, then it'd be high. So for okay. right now, that's the that's the long term that we're looking for. Exactly. So but we, for right now it's the negative because it's not happening. Okay, so we are annotating a let's see, Mr. Chair, do we have because the other thing we have one, two, three, four, five, six. This is Climbing Pike, I agree with that. Okay, so I'll just take the consensus from the number of participants that we have in the meeting, correct? I believe we have seven, seven uh, Dap St. Croix members present. Now I'll just annotate that so that everything that goes down the line, if I don't hear it differently, it will be by consensus, okay? Okay. Okay, so Marsha, where do you, and you said the same thing for- Can I annotate, please? Excuse me? Hello? I think we're having the same problem as before. In, in See, there is a, a lot of people coming in that I don't recognize and the, uh, who's Louis Duncan and Chloe? I have no idea who these people are. And Luis Quar. Graciela, just go ahead and forget about the people who are in and out because obviously they are in the wrong meeting, most of them. Okay, so marine conservation areas, closed areas. In the long run, it's a positive impact, and you want me to include a negative short-term impact, correct? Yes. And and in this case, the positive impact will be high in the long run, and would also be high in the uh, short term. In the over the negative impact, it it moves people away from their fishing grounds, etc. So that negative impact on commercial fishers would that be high also? I would think, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we've done that one too. Okay, so where do I go next? Where okay, do we go next? Um, page two, um, droughts. Um, we have as a positive impact on non-point source, whereas I understand that droughts do cause changes in vegetation. 
basically you're going to have much less runoff in a drought. So, okay, but, but what's the driving component, the runoff? The driving component is a drought, it says here. It's the what? Drought. Ah, drought, okay. A, B, C. Oh, 25th. 25th, okay. Thank you. Okay, so here we go. Can, can I can I elaborate? Open Gangnam Style. Um, in a drought, when there's less vegetation on land, you're gonna have more of a runoff when the rains come. The problem is there aren't as many rains, and so I think all told, there will be less runoff. Well, you can't you can't depend on that. Suppose we have. Right now we're experiencing a drought and we're going into hurricane season. So as we start to get these tropical waves that are supposedly coming through our way, we're, you're going to have so much runoff into the ocean, you're, you're not going to believe it. And normally in April and May, this is first, in April and May is when we get the big rains, that's when the crops then run. So eventually we will get big rains soon. Okay, that's fine. I'll go with what you say. I'm just question i just flagged it so okay so we'll i mean we're keeping track of the flag so that if there is anything that needs to be uh, addressed uh, when we are writing this up and and going through the uh, quantifying of the scores etc uh, we'll be taking notes of that so sorry i had to leave i'm back now okay welcome okay so that one you know by looking at the score that's a medium Okay. Any what what else, Marsha? Okay. Um, I'm moving on to page five. Excuse um, me. Yeah. Is this not the abortion meeting? No. Oh yeah. what? Yeah. Sorry, you're in the wrong meeting. Oh, I was really sorry about that. Yeah, go Wait, on. is this not Bye. that? Oh shit. All right, I've got to go then. On right. bye. Bye. <laughs> okay, I'm on page five of the um this nine page document. Stupid kids. Okay, okay so I'm, what's a driving component? Uh moorings. And it says it's negative for threatened and endangered species. And I would argue that um, putting boats on moorings would keep them from hurting endangered species of corals. And so I guess I would argue that that should be a positive. OK. Anyone else? And for me. And that would be a low, medium, high? Medium. I'm sorry, I, I would ask Marcia to repeat that, please. Okay, so I'm on page five and the third one down says that moorings has a negative impact on threatened and endangered species. And I'm arguing that it should be positive. Um, I think moorings protect corals um, rather than um, you know, have a negative impact. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so on the same page down a few, um, it says marinas have a positive impact on water quality. And I guess depends how you define water quality. Are you talking about impaired water quality or good water quality or just I mean, I, I, I want to understand how we got this positive. Okay, one thing that could happen with the water quality at the marinas is that if you have pump out stations, if you have, you know, the regulations that are in place, the water quality should be okay in the marinas. Okay, well, here on St. Croix, we have no pump out stations at any of the marinas. Okay, so then this really should be a negative. Correct? Right. Yeah, that, that's true with St. Croix. Okay. Can you repeat that, Marsha? There's no what in the room? Pump out stations at any of our marinas on St. Croix. Oh, okay. 
so basically everything goes into the water. So the water well, quality in the marina. Oh. Well, I believe they tell the boaters not to discharge, but I can tell you the water quality is very bad. And and there might be a regulation regarding the uh, dumping of ballast water, et cetera, outside of the territorial uh, waters. But again, it still makes a negative impact on water quality. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, in St. Croix specifically a very uh, high impact? Uh, well, I know that the marinas have very polluted water. Does uh, it extend outside the... Uh, no. the boundaries uh it's not fine. generally no it's 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 confined to the marina area so low or medium yeah which one uh if, if you're talking just about the marina waters it's high but if you're talking about overall to all the waters around st croix it would be low probably okay Muy bien. Anyone disagrees with the rationale? This is Toby. Uh, no, I don't disagree. It all depends upon the, the uh, ability to have water exchange in this particular locale. Uh, obviously, Christian said water ex exchange is much better than Green Key Marina uh, because of the confined area. So and I would, Salt River, too. <laughs> and Salt mm -hmm. as well, I would agree. For the specifics of the marina, I mean, you can make this a high and that would really flag the areas where the marinas are. For the general uh, impact on St. Croix, then it will be low. This is Toby once again, just another comment in regard to marinas. It's not just the ability of individuals to keep boats either on moorings or at the dock, but it's also about the ability to have people working on boats uh, along the shoreline. Uh, so these marinas typically have boat yards, which again adds to the pollution. So in that case, you want to change that low to a medium? Yes, I would. Okay. Okay, so. Okay, yeah. down um, at Sargassum Blooms is the driver. And right. what we have on this page five is that there is a positive benefit to invasive species. And I guess I would say that um, there are many different invasive species, of course, and um, maybe it has some positive benefits to baby sea turtles. I've heard that, I've seen that. But I don't think you can just say it. Uh, sargasm blanket has a positive impact on uh, invasive species. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, invasive species. I'm to forget the turtle thing. I'm just trying. I'm trying to figure out why we put it has a pot of positive benefit on invasive species. Well, they will come with the with the sargassum. I mean, there will be species from South America, for example, that will be coming floating into a, our areas. To the invasive species, that is a positive. To the rest of the ecosystem, it might not be a positive. Uh, so that's one thing. You do have separate uh, threatened and endangered species as the sargassum being a negative. But in this case, you just mentioned that it might be a positive in terms of providing I don't know, habitat or food or something for the uh, threatened and endangered species, correct? Yes, it could also be a negative. I mean, if you... Um you look at the sargasm blanketing the water and not that much light getting down, it's going to have a negative impact on um, Palophila, the invasive right. species of Palophila. So it, it depends what species you're talking about. And I'm not sure you can just apply it to all invasive species. So in this case, you want to make sure that this says that it's species specific? Well, you need to have some kind of a justification there. Um, some kind of what? Justification. So okay. if it if it's for a particular species that we're we're um, putting that down, let's name it. I'm not sure what that is. 
or or mm, you said you could be introducing a lot of species mm -hmm. through the sargasm. I you know I haven't seen that research. Um, I'm not aware of that. That's the case, but. So, for possible. example, recently there were a couple of, I believe, parrot fish or file fish or something that came in floating with the sargassum. Whether they get established in the area, that's a different story. Uh, but that they are capable of uh, transporting, especially smaller. Right. But invasive is defined by being established and competing with the native right. species. So a random file fish is not going to be considered an invasive species. But anything that can settle and and overtake the local species then would be right. uh, so sargassum would be positive for those. Well, I, I don't know. What species are we talking about? I, I so again what, I don't think we can say one or the other because there are so many invasives there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So so one of the things that we're noting, uh, especially in these two uh, issues with the sargassum, is that we probably would need to do a species identification type of a, a rundown to see. A, I believe that someone from the Virgin Islands had put together all of the invasives that were, a, that had really a, colonized, for use of that word, the a, some species that have already colonized their a, habitats, etc. So we would need to look at them on a species specific a, approach. Yeah, I've seen that for land species. I haven't seen it for marine and we keep finding more. So it's a, a you know, it's a, something that's changing um, the time. So do you, do you want to actually do the positive negative? You can actually do that. I mean, you have it already in the, in the, so it would here be positive slash negative and the other one would be negative slash positive and then it will run in both directions depending on the species and that would open up yeah. the space for, okay. So this one would go like that. And that one would go like that. And the threatened species one, you know, from previous scores was low. And for invasive species, it was medium. Do you want to change that scoring now that you've added a negative and a positive? And when I say you, meaning the whole DAP, I would say it's low for the invasive species. I would say high. Okay, so what species are you saying that it's it's um, negative or positive for? I, I could remember when the first, we had that first year that we had sargassum in there um, daily. I think Gerson had mentioned it too, when they had traps, there was a whole bunch of fire fish they were catching all sizes, juveniles, big ones, small ones, and this is after it passed. So it, it came in here and it restocked our our reefs with species that were not in abundance as before. No, the, the file fish aren't, is it an invasive species down here right now? The lionfish are. Okay, but, so then who knows if it stopped bringing the lionfish? Right, right, the, I'm saying, I don't know. I'm just asking how you're justifying it. Well, that's probably one way too. I mean, they do grow fast, but I mean, we have Mike on our committee who's, who was a lionfish hunter, I would want to call him, but can you, do you want to elaborate Mike and see maybe if that may be one of the things that may have caused us to get so populated with lionfish? I uh, have expressed on any of the uh, uh, research that I've uh, looked at regarding lionfish that uh, uh, sargasm has had any kind of an impact. The lionfish usually have moved from north to south while the sargassum comes in from the uh, east and southeast towards uh, the Virgin Islands. Uh, the other thing is that, I mean, sargassum has been uh, in abundance, quote unquote, over the islands for uh, many, many, many years. And uh, at least I don't recall any, as Marsha said, any of the species that actually uh, in, invaded the Virgin Islands. So they will come in with the uh, 
with the mats of sargassum, but then, you know, the sargassum will decay, the fish might not, you know, make it in the area. Uh, but we would have to look in more detail, especially now that you mentioned the file fish to see if any of those that we have in the area are in fact invasive and have actually uh, settled in the area. So I've taken notes of that. And then you want me to leave that high with a question mark and answer it in terms of the, uh, of the species that we find that are invasive? Graciela Garza Martinez. Yes. Um, just having the land fish here in the Virgin Islands and knowing that they are in depths up to a thousand two hundred feet of water, that should just that should scare us, and we should leave that in high because the same way the land fish is here and they're here to stay, any other species I don't think worse than a land fish can come to. Okay, so. We'll find out if there is any work being done on the invasive species through the sargassum bloom and see if they fit the same pattern as the lionfish, correct? Yeah, I don't think we can blame sargassum for the lionfish. I'm just saying. No, see, see I, don't, I don't think we can too. But as a, I mean, I think that what her, uh, Nikki was saying is that coming from the example of the lionfish, there might be some species that have invaded the St. Croix over the years coming in from the sargassum. And that's what we need to find out. If we come back and look at that and we say, well, there hasn't been any species that have uh, done the same thing as the lionfish, then we are done with that line. Correct? Do we all agree? Yes. Now, this is Toby. I, I agree. I think it, high designation needs to be supported with research. Uh, otherwise, it should be low. While you're on sargasm, though, a comment on the one above that for fish. The uh, intention is that sargasm has a negative effect on fish, although this may be very well true for inshore species and the decomposition of the sargasm along the shoreline does cause the water to become anoxic offshore. For pelagic species, it has a tremendous positive effect. It provides a, a surface for uh, flying fish to uh, release their eggs. The uh, eggs are um, adhesive. It provides uh, cover for many smaller fish species as well as uh, a forage area for larger pelagic fishes, tuna, wahoo, Okay, so do you want to make a separate statement? So it would be a fish and then another line for a pelagics. You yes. want to separate them, okay. Yes, I think that would be good. Okay. And then in that case for the pelagics, it would be positive. And for the positive, it would be a hi. Hi. Okay. 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 Let me save this. So all the changes that I'm making, I'm making them in yellow so that everyone can see what we're doing. And then we'll put this into the uh, into the actual scoring and change them accordingly, make the additional lines that you have created here, okay? Okay, so in terms of the sargassum blooms and the threatened and endangered species, we don't have a level there. And I guess I would suggest medium because we've got all this acropora, which is right, gonna be right at that, um, you know, the acropora we have growing here will be right at that sargassum level and it would certainly shade that. Okay, so done. I'm, I'm keeping track of where you're changing the highs and the lows so that we make it, we make the complete corrections across the uh, scoring, okay? Mm -hmm. So if I don't hear anything else, then by consensus, we agree that we're going to make these changes. Okay? Muy okay, bien. I'd like to go to page six. Um, this may be an error. Um, You've got toxic, we've got toxic bottom paints positively affecting 
point source. I mean, non-point source, yes, but it's not, it's not a point source. I don't see how it has any impact at all on point sources. Okay. So, so again, yes, this can be errors because remember that the first time we did, we did the, the handwritten notes and then we went into different types of scorings and then we went into consensus and now we're back to consensus. So do you want me to delete that line? Yes. Completely? Well, unless you want to, um, non, it, it certainly, it is a type of non-point source. So I'm not sure you need to put it in there actually. So I can put the non-point or just delete the whole thing? What do you want me to do? Delete the whole thing. Okay. Okay, so now down a little bit from there, you've got a whole bunch of water quality. And this is where I think I really need some clarification when you're talking about water quality. If you're saying that water quality has a negative aesthetic appeal, what you're talking about is impaired water quality. Is that true? Can you repeat that again so that I can follow more clearly? Okay, so um, on the same page, you've got several different water qualities drivers. Mm -hmm. And um, you're saying, we're saying water quality has a negative impact on the aesthetic appeal. Right, so that, that had to do with, you know, things like, uh, when, when the water turns a color that people don't want to go swimming in the water. But it can also, I mean, if it's not dirty, it would have a positive impact. So I think if, you, if you're talking about uh, brown water, you should say impaired water quality has okay. obviously a negative. And um, okay, that's that's and in fact, good, all yes. of those, all of those water quality things you have listed should be um, impaired, should water impaired, water. right? Moving. Yes. Okay, so for all of them. And it does have a positive effect for marine pathogens. Perfect. Thank you, Marsha. That makes more sense now. Okay, so moving down to increased water temperature, I don't see how that positively impacts fish. I would say the opposite. Okay, does any of the fishers have seen, <clears throat> excuse me, the temperature when it becomes warmer? Do you have any, any specific type of fish that comes uh, easily to your traps or something like that? Or this was an error in the... Uh, does it impact for fish positively that then increases the number of fish? Uh, I would list it as I, negative. This is, so. this is Toby. I flagged this one as well. And I indicated that it should be negative. Okay. Uh, look at the discharge from, uh, from WAPA in the harbor. Uh, the elevated discharge has a, a damaging effect on uh, fish larvae, thermal pollution. And would that be a high or a low? If it's affecting larvae. That would be high. Okay. Okay. So the only one, so we would have, yeah. So increased water temperature, color pollution, yes. Uh, coral reefs, hurricanes, yes. The more, the warmer the temperature, the more hurricanes you'll have. And a negative, in, okay. So anything else that you see in this block here that needs to be changed? I don't, I wanna move down to the next page. Can we have, can we, I don't know. I, I don't know if anything here covers it. It says increased water temperature. Should we include all RO facilities and desalination plants? As causing increased water temperature. Yeah, because the discharge back to the ocean is- We have, uh, we have point source discharges, so that would cover all of discharges. Where is that? Next page. All right. 
So <clears throat> remember that once you have these these groupings, I mean, then the, the examination of the data, the data that is available for any one of these that can be included in the uh, model will be included, okay? So this has been great in terms of clarifying the, uh, the issues. Did you want to move down to these charges or what was the next one? Yes, that you wanted? yes. Okay. I, I'm trying to understand how uh, point source discharges negatively impact marine pathogens. I would say if anything, that's positively. Okay, so they, they bloom whenever they really have these uh, discharges, right? Um, so you're talking about algal blooms. Are we talking about pathogens? Nope, marine pathogens, because if you, so, so if you discharge something, that the uh, you know that hospital stuff or something like that you know it might make the pathogens come alive or bloom. Okay, or so you're reproduce. arguing it should be neg uh, positive as well. Yes. Okay. So any notes regarding the change? And Marsha, do you have a lot of discharges that point to increase marine pathogens in St. Um, Croix? We have our, our sewage discharge, which is about two miles offshore and essentially untreated sewage. So mm -hmm. anything goes out there, everything goes out there. So, and does it return back to shore? Would that make it a, a high because it's two miles offshore or a low because it's two it miles generally, offshore? Yeah, no, it's two miles offshore and it generally it's a pretty a current there that just takes it away. Okay, so low? Yeah. Okay. Which one are we talking about, um, Marcia? Um, the, the, uh, uh, discharges, yeah, effluence, um, sewage. The sewage is not two miles, it's way beyond a mile yeah. from, from it's, land. And yes, it's 1.9 miles. Okay, and then the crucial room, that one is a couple thousand feet from shore. Yeah, 1,500, yes. Okay. But would that also contribute to these marine pathogens or that would contribute to yeah. other? Well, it certainly um, impacts water quality. Um, it's very toxic and nothing grows in it. So it has a negative impact on just about everything. Okay, so that's all negative here, okay. Okay, so I'm questioning also um, discharges, point source discharges and their positive impact on invasive species. What are we talking about here, ballast water? Uh, ballast water is included within the discharges uh, and this is the reason why lionfish came or okay. the, it's hypothesized that it's come and, and stayed. I can't think right off the top of my head of anything else. Okay, that's but fine. But if, if they come with the same temperature and they're, you know, dropped into the same type of ambience where they are uh, to grow, then I would leave that as positive, yes. Okay. Um, Please, if anyone has any other comments, you know, on the things that, that Marsha is pointing out and, and, and you guys are discussing, let me know. Uh, Graciela, may I speak? Yes, uh, I'm, I'm trying to keep up with all the connections that are being um, revised. Uh, from this one, discharges point in basic species, uh, I was looking up on the notes. Uh, the closer comment we have noted here is ballast water, in mm -hmm. uh, parenthesis illegal dumping uh, related to the invasive species. That's a comment that was annotated. Thank you. So Marsha was right, 100%. Oh, okay, um, can we move down to uh, non-point source discharges, same page, third from the bottom, having a negative impact on marine pathogens? I would say positive. Non-point, yeah.
Can we move on? Or we have discussion on this. Oh, you're looking for a, a level low. Are you speaking? I can't hear you, Graciela. I am sorry. Thank you. So, so yes, if you don't change the score here, we will be using the same score that had been provided uh, previously. So that low will bring this number down. And that's okay. 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 Next. Okay, next page eight. Um, Non-point source having a positive impact on invasive species. I'm trying to understand what species we're talking about. And I mean, I can see how maybe a lot of um, nutrients going in the water will have a positive impact on Halophila. Um, mm -hmm. But there are other species where it wouldn't have a positive impact. You know, I don't think it has a positive impact on lionfish. But I think that that in this case, they were thinking specifically about halophila, if I'm not mistaken. Stipulacea, right? That's the invasive one. Yes, stipulacea. Mm -hmm. And apparently the same thing goes for Ramicostra. Eh, they found that where they have this, eh, these charges, it also blooms. Okay, all right, that's fine. Okay. Then. Yep. Okay, it's moving down to invasive species, um, having a positive impact on marine plants algae. Um, trying to understand that since some of the species are marine plants. Um, and which species would have a positive impact on marine plants and algae. Let's see, if we look at the invasive species that you have, depending on whether they are flora or fauna, right? Mm -hmm. I, neither one would really have an impact on marine plants or algae except for allowing them to grow. So for example, uh, once you have the seagrass invading, would that seagrass, and this I don't know, really uh, overcome the algal growth? In that case, that invasive species would have a positive impact on limiting algae, which doesn't really... So it's a negative impact on the algae rather than a positive impact. So what you're saying, like the invasive species, Halophila stipulaceae, would have a negative impact on Thalassia because it overgrows it. In, in other, yes. So negative is what I would say, unless you can find an example where it's positive and maybe there are some, or maybe there will be some, but so, I can't think of any. Okay, I can't either. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to put a question mark here. And we're going to go with a negative. And would you, I, I a low score in this case? Uh, yeah, I would go with low. Okay. And by questioning these things, you know, you are forcing a, us to look into the very specific details. And this is what's going to make the difference in the ecosystem conceptual models for each island. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, moving down to marine plants, algae. Okay. Marcy, Marcy, just a second. Before we move down from that one, um, in terms of invasive species having a positive or negative implant, um, impact on marine plants and algae, if we lionfish and lionfish are high consumers of juvenile species, and if they were consuming lots of juvenile parrotfish, then it would actually have a positive impact on marine plants and algae because the algae then would have an opportunity to flourish as opposed to being grazed by the herbivorous fish. But, but lionfish are not just eating, they're eating everything. They're not just eating carrot fish or grazers. They're eating other things that um, aren't grazers. Yes. And, and go ahead, go ahead. So, so what I've done, we've done is put here a positive and a question mark and a negative because then you go up to invasive species toward fish, 
which have a negative impact. But as Toby just mentioned, there is going to be a, a differences in the uh, fish that are eaten by lionfish, for example, and then that would loop back into having more algae or less algae growing if you don't have enough grazers. So that becomes, you know, that, that more specific aspects of the conceptual model. And it, it will become important in the end, but at this stage, I think that we have the connection and we have your comments and then we can, uh, when the time comes that there will be some very specific uh, connections that need to be made in terms of species, which is what you guys are pointing to, uh, it would be uh, quite significant probably in the case of St. Croix where paired fish, it's you know, so abundant and you still have good quality of, of reefs and that kind of thing. So. Uh, that might be significant in terms of St. Croix. So you're giving a lot of thought to this invasive species. So, you know, we're, we're marking that in the, uh, in the notes. Okay, I'd like to move down to marine plants, algae and get away from these invasive species. Um, I guess I wanna know when you say marine plants, algae, are you considering um, macroalgae, or are you considering microalgae as well? Let me see if Leah High has any comments on that specific uh, definition. Um, looking here, it says marine plants algae, and further down it says fish, fishers, as uh, something associated with it, but it doesn't describe it. It's just a note. Hmm. No, so, it doesn't expand. It doesn't explain. Okay, because okay. um, look, looking at um, the impact to water quality, obviously seagrass has a positive impact and we've got it down as negative. But if you're talking about phytoplankton, um, then, then I guess you could say it's negative. So, you know, it could be positive or negative depending upon how big it is. Where am I here? Okay. And the negative would be in terms of phytoplankton, right? Right. And the positive Making. would be, okay. And I think that, you know, that should be medium. I think seagrass is extremely important in keeping our, our water quality um, good, holding the sediment in place and um, uh, slowing the water. Okay. All right, so uh, moving the next one down, we have marine plants having a negative impact on coral reefs. Um, I know that the algae, some mm -hmm. of the algae does. Um, however, not all of it does. If you have crustos corallines, that's a good thing for coral to settle on. So again, it depends upon what species you're talking about. And also if you're talking about the phytoplankton, again, it would be negative. So, uh, well, that would, you've already got negative, but. So Oh, I'm trying to argue. So the, positive, <laughs> the positive would be specifically what? Um, crustose coralline algae, the red algae that um, mm -hmm. colonize so that corals can settle. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, I'm going to, um, I'm going to stay quiet for a while and just um, talk when, uh, um, I don't have anything else specific that I've seen right now. Again, though, I don't feel like I've really had a chance to go through this stuff um, as much as I'd like to. Okay, but let me go back to the uh, ones that were missing and what uh, Toby brought to the table to make some changes. So these were the only ones that we could identify that didn't have any, any scoring or any uh, connections made. And let me just point out, like, for example, here, if you see the positive and negative, so we can do that for any, for all the ones that you've considered that have positive and negative impacts, okay? Graciela, can we uh, pause for a moment? And I think I have a, a couple more to add uh, on to what <clears throat> we just mentioned. Okay, do you want to go to the main list? Yes, on, okay. uh, on page two. 
the last line. Read me the, uh, what's, what does it read? Commercial fishers, marine debris. Commercial fishers. Okay, I'm here. Commercial fishers <clears throat> have a positive impact on debris. Okay, by removing. And what was what was the rationale on that? Would it be because they remove the marine debris, or, or do they or, contribute to the marine debris? Yeah, I, I was thinking contribute, but it could be either way. It could be either way. That's what I wanted to may make. I, may I comment? Go ahead. Ba based on the notes and under commercial features, it was this described as ghost traps and nets. So they contribute to, to, but they also, so that's the positive. They increase marine debris through the ghost traps. You still want to see it that way or do you want to change that? I think you can say as well, but I also think that they have a negative impact on marine debris. <clears throat> okay. And that would be by removing it. Correct. Okay. And in this case, we have the positive as a low, but would the negative, the uh, removal be high or low or medium? I suppose it would be low as well. Okay. On the, on the third page, under hurricanes. Right. And the impact on coral reefs, it's indicated as a negative impact. Although it does have a negative impact on coral reefs, it does have a positive impact as well. It fragments the coral and also disperses it to other areas where it can grow and spread. Okay. Okay, and would you consider that low, medium, or high? Uh, probably lower than what's indicated here for negative, probably medium. Okay. Please, if anyone has any comments while we're doing this, eh, I think that, that you are being very thorough in the comments, but if anyone has anything to say, please let me know because otherwise the total number of participants will be the consensus for the changes that are being made. I think that hurricanes have a um, high impact on corals. Negative. Okay, so that's that's this number here, this 0.75. That's a high impact from the negative number. And I'm adding the medium for the positive that Toby just mentioned, the fragmentation and the spread. Okay? So you'll have it going both ways in terms of you know, uh, here again, impact coral reefs in a positive manner and in a negative manner, okay? Yes. Yes. Okay. On the, on the fifth page, under moorings, marine plants and algae, moorings have a positive impact on marine plants and algae. They also have a negative impact on marine plants and algae. That's extremely obvious by looking at moorings that have been created in seagrass bed areas and looking at the halo Hola. created by chain drag in a 360 degree uh, fashion. Okay, and in that case, that negative would be a a medium or a high? I'd have to say it would be high. Okay. I agree with high. That, that's some moorings. Some moorings are, don't have that kind of impact if they're put in correctly. It, it depends upon where they are and how they're put in, yes. Okay, so, so one of the things that's going to happen because there, we have different groups working on this, one of the ideas is that there'll be 
uh, they'll look at the specific sites where these moorings are, where the marinas are, et cetera, and, and look at the contribution of that overall, okay? So that's part of, you know, the, the next step in this case, it's data mining, and that's already taking place by other groups. Okay. So what else? Okay. I think that's all that I have. I'd like to thank Mark for all her comments. Um, this is Mike Funk. Um, I uh, did a little quick research on sargassum and lionfish and uh, um, as I said, there's no real research, but I, I found an article that argues that um, uh, lionfish egg uh, sacs go up into the water column and can be uh, dispersed with sargassum. Um, the argument was is that uh, um, there's been quite a bit of uh, dispersal of lionfish eggs with this with the sargassum so it's an argument it, it, there's no research to to uh, to, to uh, validate it but that that is an argument if we can request a copy of the article or just the the uh, the reference that we can look it up we would appreciate it thanks mike who do you want you me to send that too thank you you Who's can good? send it to graciela or miguel or eddie and eddie will send it over to me I said it to Eddie. Okay, and he can forward it to us. Thank okay. you. Okay, and so going back to the red lines that we had originally two, and now we have these, uh, I think we can do this. Uh, so uh, the two that we had identified that didn't have any, any connections was the need for education and outreach and toxic bottom paint. And if you don't have it, the need is what impacts that there is more paint in the water, et cetera. So lack of education and outreach has a positive effect positive. on the dispersal of... Yes, positive. Okay. And that would be... Who knows? Okay. Again, I mean, that's the things that you don't have. If, if, if we find any articles that have something to do specifically with this, then we can. Uh, but do you think that there is a lot of people still dealing with toxic bottom paints? Because they've been prohibited for a while. Yes. Yeah, they, uh, they're prohibited here, but there is very little enforcement, if any. And a lot of boats come in from other areas where it's not. So I agree with that statement, yes. So medium impact then. Yes. Okay. I, I guess the question that I have is whether uh, those first two are needed or can they be substituted by what's down below? Okay, that's your decision. You want me to take these two out and we'll deal with the four that you have included. I think that's subject to comment from the others that are present. Are you saying it's already included? Oh yeah, moorings, Maria. Mm -hmm. mm. So if we look at the four that you've added here, I don't have, let's see, let me see if I can go. Lehigh, do we have them in the, in the list as they are listed here? Education and outreach to commercial oh. fishers, to recreational. Wait, I'm looking right now. Okay, so I'm going to start by the, the education and outreach for both commercial and recreational fishers seem to go through endangered and, and uh, threatened uh -huh. species first, rather than directly recreational and commercial fishers. Okay, so you want education and outreach for commercial fishers would have a positive impact, right? Correct. And that would be in the you know, uh, overall Graciela, would be, we yes. Have we have them already. Need for education and outreach to commercial fishers and recreational fishers. Uh, it was scored individually, and it already had a a mean score. It was it was high, positive high. Okay. Uh, and, Graciela. And, 
Yes. I'm getting a notification saying there's people in the room waiting. But is that someone from our for our meeting? Because I don't know. It's just on my screen. Okay. Well, let me see view. Okay, so okay, so they've been admitted, and if they're in the right meeting, then they'll have something to say. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Sorry, it was just because it was blocking my view. Okay. <laughs> Done. Okay, so these were, so you, Toby, what you really want to say is that need for education and outreach should go directly to commercial fishers. Bonjour. And, and meeting. Recreational fishers, yes. Okay. Okay, so we'll check on these two. So the high tells me that we already have them in the scoring. And then the moorings and marinas to toxic bottom paints. Yeah. There would be and, a drop down beneath moorings and marinas for, mm -hmm. for toxic bottom paints. <laughs> and then the need for. Yeah, probably for that one, I'd say Nazi Germany. <laughs> and then the need for education and outreach directly to more marinas. Okay, and and give me the positive or negative and the and the score so that we can fix it in the in the mental model. So marine and marinas to toxic negative positive and education and outreach to marinas that would have also a positive impact. Yeah. And the marine and marinas to toxic bottom paints. Uh, you say that it's still Aye. done and there is no what enforcement. Yeah. Miguel, can you mute the people that we don't know, please? Okay, so moorings and marinas. To the, so this would be a, how many moorings and marinas do you have in St. Croix? You have quite a few, right? So this would, this would be high. Can anyone hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And we can hear you. I, do I wouldn't it. say quite a few. We have a few. Okay. But the impact of the we, moorings we have, and marine. No, we have quite a bit, though. We have a bit. So leave it as high. I mean, we don't, that's the problem is we don't know what kind of impact these toxic bottom paints have. Okay. So, Salomonic decision and once we get this is this is the next step i mean now this goes to the identification of the data sets that are available so for example some of the information that you've provided us really indicates that we should look at the satellite imagery for turbidity for example so there is already an effort to look at the satellite information that's available to look at that turbidity index and see how far it goes, where it spreads, you know, how the currents move it. So that's already ongoing uh, from other uh, groups. So it will just add more of an importance in, in, in the case of St. Croix, if it scores high versus if it scores low. And that's what we've done throughout all of the uh, Joe yeah, Biden okay. entered the, I don't know. Okay, so need for education and outreach in moving to Marina. So then that would also be a, a medium, right? Or do you have a lot of traffic that will merit that education and outreach needs to be really high? I'd leave it at medium. Okay. Yes, medium. Okay. So let me check to see what I'm missing. So this, this was it. So you just changed these two that we're not going to use anymore and included these four ones that will go on to the uh, big, uh, to this big uh, Excel file. We'll redo all the scorings, correct? And then we'll come up with, let's see if I can share the screen a second. Graciela. Yes. This is David Ortiz. Will you be going over all the changes one last time? Uh, because all they're going back and forth. 
Um, I kind of lost track. Uh, see what, what, okay, hold on a second. Why am I not able to show you the components? Here we go. Can you see my screen now? Yes, I had a question about this. Yeah. I don't understand how you got these top 13 components. Could you just go over that for me? Certainly. So what you've done, right? I the high, like medium, and low. Too. Okay, the, the, the low, medium, and high that you've scored along the way, we've been modifying those uh, scores as you have discussed them in time. So today you change some other scores. And the idea would be to look and see if the scores that we have still give you this top 13 components. This is a preliminary assessment of what you've done, changing the low, medium, and high to an actual number and then ranking them by the highest scores. So if you give me a second, I'll go back to the Excel file. Okay, can you see? Oh, geez. I... Okay, so can you see my Excel file now? Oh, no. Oh, no. Yes. Okay, so now that you've seen my scores here, remember that you've made changes, but if you, if you see these numbers, right? 0 0.75, 0 0.75 would be the highest ones. So we just went through the list of pairs and came up with a driving component that was important. Now this is going to be a little bit more, uh, what do you call it, a little bit more, exact because it does have more information it will change some of these scores and then we'll come back and you with your final components from this last exercise that we've done so what we can do is that we can redo all of the scores now and we can send you the excel file and we'll mark the excel files the top components that come out of this scoring would you like to Graciela. see that? Yeah, okay, nice Graciela. Yes, this, please. This is Eddie, uh, the chair. We have eight more minutes. Does the committee want to extend this for an hour or, or what do we want to do? Don't, don't we have another item on the agenda besides this? The what question the is, we we're meeting supposed to go until three o'clock. Do you want to extend it no, until no, an, another hour? Minutes. Yes. If we have another item, we have to. The other item is going to be very short, so you might want to keep it open and then you can uh, finish the meeting as we are done with the second. Really short. What other item do we have in the agenda? The island-based FMP that- I already you... covered that in the beginning. This is the last one. Okay, so then that's it. Okay. Could you explain to me the difference between um, column R and S? What does M ah, okay. value yes. mean? So, what does that so... mean? So one of the things that we, yeah, I shouldn't have shown all of this because we were we were still trying uh, to come up with, with the exact excuse score. Me, so what we're trying to me. do, yes. Um, CM on my screen, there's like a big thing and it's like saying like, oh, it's, it keeps beeping and I can't really hear you very well. And it says like people are trying to join the meeting. Uh, see, but these are people that are not in our meeting. Okay, yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, because it's, it's just coming up on my screen. I can't really see it very well, you know. Okay, so can you see it now? Uh, yep. Two seconds. Okay, uh, so, so this year... Let me year... Go put my phone out the window, I'll try. <laughs> That's been funny. Okay, so Marsha, what we're trying to do is to just get from, you see the, let me unhide all the columns. Well, now they don't want to unhide. Okay, so if we have more than one score, so these are all outdated already, we scored individually all of your uh, high, mediums, and lows. This you did two meetings ago. At the last meeting, you included a consensus statement for the high, medium, or low. So this is a little bit outdated because we have to update it uh, now. And now you've changed also some scores. So all this is, is the average of all the scores that you've come up with, okay? 
Yes. You follow me? So yeah, yes. So, okay. It's the next. It's the next one I'm confused about. So we're trying to figure out. We we've been discussing the use of absolute values instead of negative values. So that's what we were trying to do. But why did, why did we switch from um... <laughs> exactly? So you see here that's a minus seven. That's a negative. See where I'm pointing. Yes. Okay. Yes, so, I see. But, but when you try to do the statistics on these things, when you use these negative values, then it adds a complication. So we've been discussing with people who do modeling a lot to use absolute values. Once you use the absolute values, because you've given us the negative and the positive, we already have it. So we can express that after we're done with selecting what are the most important issues in St. Croix. That clearer now. Yes. What does MM stand for? Yeah, I'm also wondering what is what does MM stand for? <laughs> Leah, hi. Is it like uh, MM, magnitude like mean magnitude mean value. Or something like that. So yeah, so we shouldn't have shown you that because that one is just something that we're that's the actual value, but By the, the one that we'll be okay, using. Okay. Yeah, so the one that we're yeah, using yeah, right now yeah. is this magnitude that it's the absolute value. That's what we want to use for the next step. Yeah, that doesn't have anything to do with what we are supposed to do today. Bueno, this is what's going to happen once you tell me high, medium, low, negative, and positive from the R onward. That's, that's the statistics that's what I, that we do. That's what we need, high, medium, low. Okay, but you will see the development of how we're going to assess uh, these values. Okay, that's the next step. We haven't, the, this is our first trial at doing this. So once we're figuring out how to, how to really use them in terms of the score, then you'll have the final answer. But based on just the absolute value of the post, without thinking of positive and negative, that's where these 13 components came from. Let me show you. As of the last meeting, so now we have to readdress this and see if all these are still your main top components. Yeah, okay. I, I'd probably say these are my main top components at, at this moment in time, but I feel like over the course that could probably change. Exactly. So, and they're not, we're trying, to, one thing that we put was the number just to make sure that we have the 13. But the ranking then will be another measure of how important that is in terms of St. Croix. Okay. And this is the same thing that it's being done for St. Thomas and the same thing that it's being done for Puerto Rico. And most likely they won't be the same, the same uh, components and most likely they won't be in the same uh, ranking. Okay, and one thing that this does, and this is something that's already uh, people have seen it, it's to, to indicate where research needs to be done, where we need to find more information, what the weak points of the, of the model are, et cetera. So that's why we keep, and, and, and if you look at the other presentation that we had, most likely you'll see a difference in the ranking because it changes as you change your scores. And that's what we want. We want to refine the information so that it really fits the model for St. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Understood. Okay. So uh, may I may I clear up about the MM value? I know that this this Excel this spreadsheet was supposed to um, be simpler for your interpretation in, in this moment, but the MM value is. I, if I'm not mistaken, is the uh, medium mode. So that, that's basically the what it stands for. But it was previously used by the other um, person so, that was doing the Excel. So the thing is that we need to look at the statistics and that what we need to decide once we have the scores on where to go. If we're going to use the, the mean, the median, the mode, et cetera. But that we haven't gotten to that stage uh, yet. And that's why we're turning to people who do a, a lot of statistics to help out with, with the, that information. Graciela, the important thing is, <clears throat> have you covered what you wanted to cover at this meeting? All of it. Okay, so we're done. All of that. Jeez, okay, two seconds. I need to clear my calendar. Okay, so does anyone have any other questions?
No, um, Garcia, is the meeting nearly over? Because my wife is in the meeting room. Is a what? It's, my wife is in the meeting room. Oh, okay. Rosalie Cruz. Over. Don't worry, the meeting is over. Miguel Graciela, a uh, great job, and you know, sorry you guys had to put up with this stuff today. No problem. That's a first for yeah. me. Bye now. <laughs> Mine too. Hola, gracias.